how to set up an internal RAID on an iMac through OSX El Capitan or Yosemite. If we take two hard drives running at 3 gigabits each and set them up in a RAID, this will combine both of their speeds and make them run at 6 gigabits altogether. This will allow you to access your data up to two times faster. But before we proceed, let's make sure that your specific iMac is capable of getting the speed boost. In the top left corner, click the Apple logo and go to about this Mac. Go ahead and locate your iMac's size and year. We'll need this information for the next step. Go ahead and open the Safari browser. Navigate to AppleDollars.com. Once at AppleDollars.com, select Upgrades. Then select Setup RAID System. Click IMAX. Here you will find a table with information on whether your iMac is capable of a RAID and if you will get a speed boost. Navigate back to the AppleDollars.com homepage. Select IMAX. Select your iMac size. Then select your iMac year. We'll need to see two videos. One on how to replace your DVD drive with the extra SATA hard drive. Then we'll need the actual hard drive replacement video. Because this varies on every single model and Apple has made multiple hundred of them, you need to know your specific model for your specific year. For the RAID setup, we'll need two SSD hard drives. They have to be the same size. We'll need a SATA to USB converter cable, two of them, one for each drive. After we partition the drives into a RAID, we'll be cloning your current hard drive right onto this RAID drive. We'll need a toolkit that includes a T6, T8, and a T10 screwdriver. We'll need an optical bay drive adapter. We'll also need a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch converter adapter for your main hard drive. Go ahead and plug your SATA hard drive into the SATA to USB cable and plug in your first drive into the back of the iMac. Now go ahead and plug in the second adapter and plug the second drive in. We're now ready to prepare the drives for the RAID. Go ahead and begin by opening up Safari and navigating to AppleDollars.com. At AppleDollars.com, there is a command that we will need to copy and later paste into the terminal. Once at AppleDollars.com, click Upgrades. Select Setup RAID System. Select IMAX. Scroll all the way down where you will find the command that we need to copy. Please note that the last two instructions of the command are going to depend strictly on your specific setup. Go ahead and select the command, right click on it, and copy it. Let's go ahead and go to Go Utilities and open up the terminal. Once inside of the terminal, type in disk utility space list. This will give us a full list of all the hard drives that are connected to the system. The two hard drives that we plugged in through the SATA to USB cables will be listed here. Please note their identifiers. Their identifiers are going to need to correspond to the command that we're about to paste. Go to edit and paste the command in. Don't run the command just yet. Let's become familiar with it. Disk Util runs a non-GUI disk utility. Apple RAID Create Stripe is a subcommand of Disk Utility to create the RAID Stripe. Storage JHFS Plus Disk 
2 and disk 3 combines the two disks into the RAID system. Make sure you've chosen the correct disk as running this command will wipe out disk 2 and 3. Go ahead and run it. This will take about 2 minutes. Once the drive is formatted, let's make sure that it shows up correctly in the disk utility. Let's go ahead and type in exit. This will quit the terminal, close the terminal window, and quit the terminal program. The RAID drive should already be on your desktop. Click it once and rename it to Macintosh HD or SSD RAID, depending on your specific setup. This will allow us to track it more easily. Let's go ahead and go to Go now and go to Utilities. Select Disk Utility and open it up. Click the Macintosh SSD or HD RAID. Verify that all the information is correct, that it's formatted as a RAID set volume, and that both of the hard drives have been combined into one single hard drive unit. Go ahead and close everything. Let's move on to the next step. Open up Safari again and at AppleDollars.com navigate to Downloads. Click CCC4. This is Carbon Copy Cloner. Free 30 day trial. We're going to use it to completely clone our hard drive onto the RAID drive. Go ahead and open it up. Click to move it to the Applications folder. Click Agree. Click Trial. You can purchase this if you want, but for now, let's keep things free. Select your source destination as your regular hard drive that you use. Select the destination as the Macintosh SSD or HD RAID that we just created. Click Clone. You'll be prompted for your password. Put in your password and continue. This process can take anywhere from 15 minutes to multiple hours depending on how much data you have. Once completed, we can go ahead and close the Carbon Copy Cloner. Go ahead close out all the windows, shut down your system and unplug the drives. Please note that now your entire computer is on those two SATA disks. For them to be recognized as one drive, they both have to be plugged in simultaneously. Let's get our Phillips head screwdriver and prep the first drive. Install the first drive into the optical adapter. It's as simple as sliding it in and tightening the screws. Now let's prep the second drive. This is going to be the main drive. Make sure to position it correctly and secure it with four Phillips head screws. It doesn't really matter which drive goes into which slot. Please note that this is a mere demonstration and that all iMacs differ internally. Please watch your specific video. Go ahead and unplug the power cord from the back of your Mac. This is very important as there is a live power supply. On this model with two suction cups in each corner you can pull down the LCD glass panel and pull it out. This will expose what we need to do for the next step. There are eight screws, four T10 screws on each side that are holding in the LCD. Let's go ahead and remove those. This will allow us access to the back of the iMac. Here we'll go ahead and pull down the LCD unit. There are about four different connections inside. The temperature sensor, the vertical sync cable, the LVDS cable, and the power for the vertical sync. Once those four connections are unplugged, you can go ahead and remove the LCD panel. With the LCD panel removed, we can see where we'll be installing the drives. The optical 
storage adapter will go in place of the DVD wrong and the other hard drive adapter will go in place of the standard hard drive. Let's begin by removing the standard hard drive. It's bolted in with two top screws. Once you remove those screws, unplug its cables and just slide it out. We'll need to transfer two T6 screws. Once those two T6 screws are removed, go ahead and place them on your new adapter. These are placement screws and will allow the hard drive to stay in its bay. Once set in, you can go ahead and, and plug in the SATA power and the SATA data cables into the drive. Then go ahead and tuck in the drive. Reinstall the two T6 screws in the top. On the optical drive, we'll need to remove the optical drive sensor. The drive is held in with four T8 screws in this model. Removing those screws will release the drive. You can pull it out and unplug the SATA power and data cables. We need to transfer the plastic portion to the new drive. It's held in with four screws on the old optical drive. With a pair of scissors for this specific kit, we'll need to cut off the aluminum screw holes that are made specifically for MacBooks. This can be easily done with scissors. The enclosure is simple aluminum so it can be easily cut off. You can see which part needs cutting by comparing it to the old optical drive that was in the bay. Once we prepped the new adapter, we can go ahead and reattach it to the old plastic adapter to get it to go into the socket correctly. Go ahead and attach just the top two screws that were part of the original optical drive. Now we can go ahead and plug in the new hard drive and slide it into the bay. Before reassembling the unit, we need to reattach the optical drive sensor that was on the original optical drive. Make sure to do this because your fans will run loud if you do not reattach the sensor correctly. Go ahead and secure it with the four T8 screws. We can now remount the LCD. Reconnect the four connections and reinstall the eight T8 screws. We can then put on the glass panel and we're all done. Your raid should be now ready. Thank you very much for watching.